Hi, Phyllis here, southernfrugal.com. This afternoon I'm going to pick some curry chicken and I'm going to make it in my Instant Pot. Now I've never made it in the Instant Pot before. I'm also cooking for eight people rather than just two. And so what I'm going to end up doing is freezing six of the servings. So I have to make sure that I'm fixing something that freezes well. And uh, the curry chicken freezes really, really well. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut up one large Vidalia onion. That's those really sweet onions. And so I've already got my uh, pot on and it's now telling me it's hot. So I'm going to use a couple of tablespoons of coconut oil. This is a really big spoon, so that's a good two tablespoons right there. And the uh, coconut oil does stay uh, sort of liquidy at the kind of temperature. It's about 75 degrees in here. So I'm going to saute that onion. So we're just going to let that cook for a minute and we'll, we'll just talk, okay? So when Mr. Bucky was working uh, in a town about 200 miles away from where we are now, and uh, he worked there five days a week and came home on the weekend. So I got concerned about his eating habits up there. I really did. So I uh, ended up buying a little chest freezer for $125 at Lowe's, and I started making him dinners frozen that he would take up there. Now, one day a week up there, they prepared lunch for the students and the faculty. And so he really uh, just took four different lunches uh, for his big meal of the day to eat while he was up there. And I felt real good about that. So we did that for any number of years. So once he retired and was home all the time, I got real smart and decided I would just sell my freezer. And that's what I did. And it wasn't any time after that I ended up getting a bigger freezer. So I haven't done these meals as much as I used to do them. But uh, anyway, uh, I think it was about last February, I made some meatloaf dinners and froze those. And the other night, we, I took them out. And I mean, we'd already eaten some of them. So I took the last two out and we had them. And to my surprise, they were quite delicious, and they had been frozen, let's see, February, March, April, May, June, July, six months, and they were good. Now, I had uh, thought I was being real clever, and I put the ketchup on top of the meatloaf, and the ketchup kind of tastes like nothing after it was frozen, so we had to use a little more ketchup, but the meatloaf and the vegetables, everything were just delicious still, so... Uh, anyway, I'm going to be doing that some more because it's so convenient when we're doing something and, you know, you don't really have time to cook properly and you're tempted to go out to eat, then this is the thing to do. And you can do it if you've got uh, children, so there's four or six in your family, then you can still make the meals and... Uh, just put them in bigger containers for a whole meal and it, it takes some uh, trial and error to find out what freezes well but anything you see in a TV dinner or one of those dinners that's in a bag that you dump in the skillet and stir for anything you see in those they froze it so we can freeze it no big deal at all so anyway uh, it works out really well and it definitely prevents you from going out to eat. I can testify to that. It definitely makes you, you know, not go out to eat. Now, the rule is, don't ever freeze anything that's not good. Yeah, because it isn't going to get any better in the freezer. So if you didn't like it when you cooked it, you're really not going to like it when you freeze it either. So uh, the rule is, just freeze stuff that you like that's really tasty. And uh, so anyway, I've had my chicken in the curry powder for, I don't know, an hour or so. And that's probably a good three tablespoons of curry powder. 
maybe two and a half. I'm not sure. This bottle was new, and I've used about a fourth of it for sure. So I just used the curry powder, and uh, I cut, these were lo four large chicken breasts, and I just used my scissors and cut them directly in half, and went ahead and sprinkled the curry powder on the chicken. So the other thing we're going to do is uh, stirring those onions a little bit. Now the onions, of course, because I'm cooking this in the Instant Pot, don't have to be done. But I did want them on the bottom. So the other thing I'm going to use is some Thai uh, coconut milk. It doesn't have any sugar in it. So I'm going to dump that in and then just put the chicken right in on top of it. And I'm not using my rack, and I'm, of course, really hoping that nothing sticks to the bottom. And I'm really thinking it won't, because I'm cooking those onions with the, the coconut oil in there. So I'm going to go ahead and dump in my uh, coconut milk. Just dump the whole can. Now, this can was... a. Uh, 13.66 ounce and you can find this in Walmart in that section that sells Chinese stuff and all that. It's a little kind of corner of Walmart that sells that. So now I'm just going to dump my chicken right in on top of that. There's no rack or anything in there. Let me show you what it looks like. I don't want to jiggle you so hold on a minute. Okay, there's what it looks like in the pot. I didn't uh, saute the chicken or anything. I just put it in there. And I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on. I always have trouble with this lid. Y'all got any great ideas on how to get the lid on? Because I know I'm doing something wrong. There it goes. Because there should be a little arrow over here on this side. And I do see the little arrow, but it doesn't quite line up. Anyway, I'm going to close it off now, and I'm going to turn it to the, this indicator, venting and steam. I'm going to turn it over there. And let me take y'all off this and show you. And right here, of course, it's been on saute to saute the onions. So I'm just going to cancel that, and I'm going to put it on poultry and that says 15 minutes now I think it's going to take a little longer because some of those chicken breasts were mighty thick so I'm going to take it up to 20 minutes all right we will see y'all back here in just a minute now I've already cooked my beans I'm using some green beans and these are uh, little baby uh, limas green baby limas I've got enough for eight servings. I've got my rice, enough for eight servings. And this is some uh, Granny Smith apples. And I just cooked them kind of in their own juice, just a teeny bit of water. Added um, half a cup, no, three-fourths of a cup of raisins, golden raisins, about the time they were getting done. So they would puff up. And I'm also going to add some of the dates. Now these are dates from the freezer. and I. Uh, steam them just to make sure they don't have any bacteria and then I freeze them out on a cookie sheet so this is about eight of those large dates and I just snipped them into thirds and so they're going to go in this dessert too and the other thing I have made is some apple um, some crunch to go on the top which is just flour butter and sugar and you put it in the oven and just let it get kind of brown hold on let me take you and show you that I'll bring it over here Okay, this is the crunch that goes on the top of apple crunch, and you can make the uh, apple uh, uh, crisp, I, I think some people call it apple crisp, using this. But this is one cup of self-rising flour, three-fourths of a cup of sugar, and one stick of butter. And you just mix it in like you were making a pie crust. And uh, instead of putting it on the apples, I put it on some parchment paper in one of my older pans that's black. And put it in the oven 350 degrees for 20 minutes. And as you can see, it's crunchy. So I'll put this on the top of this uh, apple stuff when I get them in the containers. All right, y'all. We'll be back in a minute once this chicken's done. 
All right, it's been about 20 minutes or a little over now, and I'm gonna let the steam out of this. And what I have been doing to go ahead and let the steam out, I went ahead and cut it off, and I just put my dish rag over it and turn it, have my fan on up here to take out the steam, and that way uh, we'll be able to eat a little bit quicker. All right, I'm gonna put this on the plate. Well, I'll show you what it looks like when we take the lid off, so hold on. The steam has come out of it. It's a good way to disinfect your dish rag. It's very hot. All right, let's take the lid off because my little button's going down. And I can already tell it definitely did not stick to the bottom. Yeah, it made plenty of sauce there. I might have to thicken that a little bit of cornstarch or something or maybe not. Anyway, I'm going to put this on the plates and we'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. Mr. Buck and I are going to go ahead and eat because this stuff needs to cool before I fill the container. So we'll be right back. Alright, here's what it looks like on the plates and I decided not to thicken up that sauce so a lot it would soak up in the rice even better. There's our little apple crunch and the uh, beans and green beans. That's uh, baby green limas and just regular green beans. And of course I've got our iced tea so we're ready to eat. All right, we'll be back and I'll show you uh, when I put it in the uh, little containers. And there's the beans, there's the apple stuff, and the rice. All right, we'll be back as soon as we get through eating and all this stuff cools down especially this. All right, we'll be back. All right, we finished our lunch and the stuff is pretty much cooled and this is what it looks like. Now all this will freeze really well. Now this little uh, crunch stuff I put on the top of the apple and date and raisin little dessert. I did that right because I didn't have any left except a few crumbs. But everything worked out uh, just making uh, a meal for eight people. And so this way we have got six servings and uh, let me turn this around, hold on. Okay, so one of the things I've learned in making meals like this is to uh, make a whole bunch of different kinds of meals. And uh, you know, like I, we probably won't have this meal again for about two weeks. And that way uh, you don't get bored. I don't know any other way to say it, you need to do a bunch of different ones and of course this would be ideal if you are uh, someone who lives alone uh, and just take a day or two and make a whole bunch of meals freeze them and then have a different meal every night that's right all right here it is again everything worked out perfect I did not uh, uh, see we used every bit of that uh, juice and that juice actually it's going to soak up in that rice, so I did not thicken the juice at all in that uh, curry chicken. And it was very, very tender. Very tender. All right, y'all, we will see y'all next time.